Hi folks, I'm Matthias Peyer from Purdue University and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the last but not least session of CCS on even more attacks. And we have a very exciting uh, set of papers. We start looking, at Android, uh, start looking at Android systems, then do different forms of fuzzing and then mutational testing. So we've got a couple of interesting attacks and as the very first attack, um, we'll have uh, an attack on Android ION by Hang Zhang and he will tell us more about it. Take it away. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Han Zhang from UC Riverside. And uh, today, I'm glad to present our recent work about some newly found vulnerabilities in ION, which is a memory management system for Android platform. Uh, actually, I don't know how to pronounce this ION word. Maybe I should say ION or something similar, but, uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, to be safe, I will keep it as I own. Okay. Uh, and this work is done with some very cool people. Dong Dong She and uh, Zhi Yunqian, my advisor. We are all uh, security researchers from University of California, Riverside. Okay. Uh, I will begin this presentation by talking about our everyday memory requirements. And usually, if you want to allocate some memory, a natural choice is to use malloc. And this widely used library function can provide us with some virtual address region. And we don't need to care about the underlying physical pages. We don't need to care about the mappings between the physical and the virtual pages. Uh, so in general, this malloc function can satisfy most of our memory requirements for normal user process. But sometimes we may have some special memory requirements. Uh, for example, some hardware devices, they may need a physically contiguous memory to work properly. And some other hardware devices may have some restrictions of memory alignment or catch policy. So the problem is, how can we meet all these special memory requirements? Well, a traditional design is that as long as the device needs some special memory buffer, and this work will be handled in its, in its own device driver. And as users, we only need to specify our high-level operations, like uh, play some music or draw me a picture, and all the other work, including the special memory allocation, will be done by the device drivers inside the kernel space. So this process is totally transparent to users. And uh, this traditional design is widely used in Linux. We also have a new design about the uh, special memory requirements. And in this, in this new design, we have a separate memory manager. And now, as long as the user needs some special memory buffer, he only needs to specify his requirements. And the separate memory manager will allocate a buffer according to these requirements. And after the buffer is allocated, and these buffers will be represented by handles. And these buffer handles can be passed across user and kernel space. That means that uh, both user and kernel can share the buffer and access the buffer content. And uh, this paper is about ION. ION is just such a separate memory manager for Android platform. This new design has its own advantages. Uh, the first advantage is that this new design offers more flexibility for user libraries. For example, uh, now a user library can allocate a graphic buffer, and then it can pass the graphic buffer to camera. And the camera device will take some photos, and then fill the graphic buffer with the raw image data. And after that, the user library can pass the same buffer again to like a GPU, and the GPU will do some image processing or transformation or some rendering to the raw image data. So you can see that the whole process is, is very flexible. And in the whole process, we only need to pass around the buffer handle instead of the actual memory pages. So this is also very efficient. And another advantage of the new design is that uh, sometimes it will be a must to have the buffer sharing capability 
between user and the kernel space. For example, uh, for same graphic buffer, sometimes we need to do some software rendering in user space with CPU. And uh, after the software rendering, we may also need to do some hardware rendering with the same graphic buffer by GPU in the kernel space. So in this situation, it will be necessary to have the buffer shareable between user and kernel space. And the third advantage of the new design is that this new design can reduce kernel space complexity greatly. Because previously we said that the special memory allocation work are done in various device drivers. But now all the work are done in the separate memory manager. So it will be easier for developers to write device drivers. Uh, based on these advantages of the new design, the developers are proposing to integrate ION from Android to mainline Linux. OK, let's take a look at the basic architecture of ION. Uh, basically, ION will maintain some memory heaps, and each memory heap belongs to a certain heap type. And uh, different heap types can manage um, different kinds of memory. For example, some heap types may manage the physically contiguous memory, but some may not. And uh, different heap types uh, have their own ways to manage the memory. But one thing is the same. All the heap types must implement the same interface specified by LN. And this interface includes some general methods uh, like alloc for allocating memory, like a free, like a map. So with this unified interface, a user can allocate memory from any of the underlying ION heaps. He only needs to specify the heap ID. And this architecture is also very customizable and extensible. First, the vendors mm, can decide which heap types and heap instances they want to use on their own devices. And uh, they can also modify the existing type implementation. They can even uh, implement their own heap types. They can do the implement implementation according to the IO interface. Uh, this is because uh, different device vendors may, may choose different hardware, like the uh, audio chips or video cards. There can be multiple models of this hardware. So for this different hardware, they may need the different uh, heap type or heap instance to support this hardware. Uh, okay. So far, we have covered the background and the history of ION, the memory management system for Android. And uh, we have identified that it has two major design choices. One is the unified interface, and another one is the buffer sharing capability. But uh, unfortunately, as we discovered, each of the major design choices can eventually lead to a class of vulnerabilities. And we will talk the two classes of vulnerabilities later. And for each class of vulnerability, I will analyze its root cause. And I will demonstrate some uh, actual exploitation case study. I will discuss the vulnerability discovery and defense methods. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the denial of service vulnerability caused by the unified interface. Uh, we know that uh, if a user wants to allocate some memory from ION system, it needs to send some IO control commands to the ION device file, dev ION. But the thing is, the dev ION file is a traditional Linux file, and it's under the protection of tradi traditional uh, Linux file permission model. So, uh, even if there is only one valid user who really needs the ION memory, this device file should be accessible to all the other user apps, like this picture shows. So, and with the unified interface we have introduced before, now any user app can allocate arbitrary memory from any ION heap. This can cause problems. For example, uh, on many devices, the system audio service will depend on an ION heap named audio heap. The thing is, if an attacker occupies all the available memory of the audio heap, then the system audio service will stop working 
and their device will be unable to play any sound, including the ringtone. So possibly you can miss a very important phone call from your, from your boss, from your girlfriend or boyfriend, who knows. So this is the problem. Um, but not all the DOS vulnerabilities are so easy to exploit. Some DOS vulnerabilities need a proper timing to exploit. Uh, for example, on Samsung S6 and uh, S7, there is a fingerprint authentication service. And uh, this service will rely on a ION heap named the SecDMA heap. The name SecDMA is short for secure DMA, but it seems that it's not so secure. Uh, the thing is that uh, when the screen is locked, the fingerprint service will occupy all the memory from the SecDMA heap. So at this time point, we cannot grab the memory from this heap. But as long as the screen is unlocked, the fingerprint service will release the memory from the SecDMA heap. So now, an attacker can occupy all the memory of the SecDMA heap. And the next time the screen is locked, the fingerprint service will find itself unable to allocate any memory from the SecDMA heap. So the result is a user will be unable to unlock the device with his own fingerprint. OK, to discover all these DOS vulnerabilities, we have designed a dynamic test procedure. And uh, for a certain ION heap, its available memory may be fragmented. So um, every time, we will allocate the largest available memory block from an ION heap. And we will repeat this process for several times until we have taken up all the available memory from a certain ION heap. So after that, we will observe the system, uh, system exceptions, like the failure to play sound. So this way, we found a bunch of DOS vulnerabilities in ION. Uh, and uh, regarding the defense methods for the DOS vulnerabilities, we found, uh, we found it's very difficult to come up with a perfect solution for the DOS problems. Uh, one solution may be that we can integrate a fine-grained access control into ION, and this uh, access control will specify which user can allocate how much memory from which ION heap. But this method needs us to do some modifications in the ION driver in kernel space, so maybe it's not so desirable. And another solution is that we may uh, set up some agent processes for each ION heap. And uh, now, if a user wants to allocate memory from a certain ION heap, he needs to talk to the agent process. Oh. Since Like this? Oh, perfect. Okay. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. And uh, we have just talked about uh, another solution to defend the DOS vulnerabilities. And we have talked about the way we can set up some agent processes for each ION heap. Uh, then if a user wants to allocate memory from a certain ION heap, he needs to talk to the agent process at first. And the agent process will decide whether the user's requirements can be satisfied according to some security polishers. 
Uh, so this way, we don't need to modify the kernel space. And all the check is done in the user space. But the thing is, previously, we do the ION system access from the IO control command sent to the ION device file. But now we need to access ION from some agent process. The interface uh, ha have been ch have changed. So this may cause some compatibility issues. Uh, okay, we have talked about the DOS vulnerabilities. And now let's take a look at the information leak vulnerabilities. Personally, uh, I think the information leakage vulnerabilities is more interesting. Okay. Uh, we know that a user can request some memory buffer from ION. He can, he can send some error control commands to the ION system. And then the ION system will allocate some memory buffers for the user. But the problem is that the allocated buffers may contain some dirty pages that can include some sensitive information. If the dirty buffer can only accessible from the kernel space, the things will be OK. Because anyway, the sensitive inf information cannot be leaked out to the user space. But uh, you may remember that we say a major design choice of ION is its buffer sharing capability. So now the user will have an opportunity to access these dirty pages from a user space. So this can cause many, many information leakage vulnerabilities. And uh, you may wonder where there will be dirty pages in the ION buffer. Well, mm, there are some reasons for that. One reason is customization. Uh, we have said that there are so many different vendors, and they may have their own customization of our own system. So there will always be someone who can make errors, and there will always be some vendors who may forget to zero the buffer, and this can cause problems. And another reason is the complexity of memory allocation functions. If we allocate memory use the malloc function, the things may be okay. Because this function is so widely used and its behaviors are well understood, it will guarantee a security because every time a process gets some new pages, the new pages will be zeroed, so no information leakage vulnerabilities. But for Alvin, the situation is different. And Alvin needed to do some special memory allocations, so it needs to Mm, it needs to use many complex kernel memory allocation functions. And these kernel functions have complex behaviors. Some kernel functions may guarantee to zero the buffers, but some may not. And uh, there are many kernel functions that are not well documented. So the developers mm, will be totally confused because they don't know the exact behaviors of these kernel functions. Where they are not, they will clear the buffer. So regarding this problem, our goal is that uh, we want to develop a tool that can help the developers to understand the exact behaviors of these kernel memory allocation functions. And uh, our method is based on some simple observations. And uh, the first observation is that uh, mm, if a function intends to allocate a memory buffer, it must know the buffer size. And this, this buffer size is usually a parameter of the function, like the size parameter. You can see from the picture. And another observation is that if this allocation function want to zero the buffer, usually they will, uh, they will call some utility functions, like memset. And this zeroing function, they also need to know the buffer size. OK. So our solution is uh, static tent analysis. And uh, in this tent analysis, our tent source is a size parameter. And our tent sync is a zeroing function. Uh, so the tent source, the size parameter, can reach the zeroing function in different ways. If we look at the locked function one, we can find that the uh, size parameter of the zeroing function memset can be directly derived from the original size parameter of the allocation function. But uh, if we look at the right side, we can find that the memset 
will be indirectly related to the original size parameter because now the size parameter will control the iteration times of the for loop, and in each for loop, the mem set will be invoked. So our tent analysis will consider both the data tent and the control tent. And with this method, we can also avoid some uh, corner cases. For example, some function uh, may need to zero some auxiliary data structures. And this auxiliary data structure structures have a different size compared to the actual memory buffer. So our method can filter out these issues. Okay. If with this tent analysis, we cannot find any tented paths from the original size parameter to the zeroing function, we can say that uh, uh, the function is vulnerable because it will not do any zeroing. So um, the information can be leaked. But if we can find some tented passes, uh, maybe, the, maybe the function is still vulnerable because there may exist other allocation passes that forget to zero the buffer. So our tool will also work back the tented paths to help the developers to explore other passes to see whether there exists the other dangerous passes. So with this tool, we have uh, discovered many information leakage vulnerability. For example, on Samsung S7, the camera service depends on the ion heap named the camera heap. And uh, if you open your system uh, camera app, and uh, hold your phone around. And even though you, you don't need to take the snapshot, but your camera, but your camera will, um, will catch the preview frames into the camera heap continuously. And then you close your camera app. And, uh, and the attacker can reallocate memory buffer from this camera heap. But unfortunately, in the whole process, the buffers are not cleared, are not zeroed. So attacker can easily steal all your private image data. Uh, okay. Now I want to talk about uh, the most dangerous vulnerability we have found in the ION, and the name the leave memory dump. And with this vulnerability, uh, we can basically dump the memory of any running user processes in, on Android devices. Okay, I will talk about the details. Uh, to understand this vulnerability, we must uh, first be familiar with the term CMA, and CMA is short for contiguous memory area. And this CMA memory area is originally reserved for special requirements. Uh, we have talked previously, some devices may need a contiguous memory region. So in this situation, the system can assign the CMA area for these special memory requirements. Uh, but the thing is, to improve the memory utilization, in some cases, the reserved CMA region can also be assigned to normal user processes. If the other normal memory regions are heavily used, then the system may assign the CMA region to a normal user process. So you can say, as an attacker, if we firstly occupy all the no CMA areas. And then if we run some apps, because the no CMA uh, normal memory areas uh, are already occupied by us, so the launched apps will be assigned the CMA area by the system. Okay, and uh, here is the third attack step, which, which is the most critical. What we will do is, at this time point, we will allocate a CMA memory region using the ION CMA heap. So what will happen? The system will think that, okay, currently there is a device needing some contiguous memory region. This is a high priority, right? But currently, there are some user processes using the CMA areas. So what the system will do is, it will copy all the user pages in the CMA area to other, memory to other memory locations. So the CMA area can be reused by us. Okay, now the, the attacker can access the CMA area. The problem is that the user pages previously left in the CMA area are not zeroed by the CMA heap. So from this, this previously left user pages, we can get 
many, many things information. In our experiments, we can get uh, information including, but not limited to Chase Bank transaction records, uh, Gmail content, your Chrome browsing history, the web content, your Evernote content. Uh, in some cases, we can also get some network passwords. And it's also possible for us to get some crypto keys. OK, this, uh, this attack is very dangerous because at first, we can do leave memory dump. You don't, you don't need to wait the user processes to finish execution. You can just do the leave memory dump. And second, this attack affects virtually all the user apps on the Android devices. OK, we have talked about the information leakage vulnerabilities. And about its defense, at first, I want to say that our talent analysis tool can help the developers get rid of the problems in the early development stage, because now the developers ha have a better understanding of the behaviors of the kernel functions. So this can help, help them avoid some disasters. And uh, what if the problem um, has already occurred? We can, we can patch the problems in an ad hoc way. Uh, that means as long as we find the vulnerability in a certain I/O heap, we can patch this I/O heap. Mm. But there are so many vendors, and they also have different I/O implementation. So the vulnerabilities on different devices are also different. So with this ad hoc way, it may be very difficult to patch all the vulnerabilities on various devices. We may also integrate a general and a mandatory Zerian mechanism into our own framework. Um, so we can guarantee that uh, all the heaps will be zeroed. But with this method, once again, we need to do some fundamental changes in our own drivers in the kernel space. So th this may not be desirable as well. OK. Uh, basically, we have covered uh, all the two classes of vulnerabilities. To be a conclusion, we found analyzed two classes of widespread own related vulnerabilities. We have analyzed their root cause. We have development a uh, static tent analysis tool to analyze the custom equation functions. And we also offer suggestions for defense and the dis discovery of these vulnerabilities. And we also reported our findings into into industry, and we reported these issues to Google, Huawei, Samsung, and Qualcomm, and uh, we have reported many issues, and uh, all the issues are confirmed by this, uh, by this company, and we have, uh, we have got uh, four CVE numbers uh, sent, and uh, one from Google and three from Huawei. Huawei also gave us a very quick response, and they have patched the most of the issues. Um, but the problem is that the DOS problems, as we discussed before, it can be very difficult to patch because uh, this problem is more complicated. Uh, okay. Okay, that's all. Thank you.